sector in BC. From retail stores to computer programmers and even the family farm, small businesses impact every sector of the BC Jobs Plan. Small business is a key driver of job creation and economic growth. 98% of businesses in BC have fewer than 50 employees. Small businesses account for 31% of the province's GDP, and small businesses account for 86% of all provincial exporters. Small business benefits all British Columbians through increased job creation, innovation, and economic competitiveness. Some notable BC Jobs Plan progress made. The Government of British Columbia is continuing to work on removing red tape. Recently, they have extended their commitment to a net zero increase of regulatory requirements until 2019. They sponsored the Small Business Roundtable's 2014 Open for Business Awards, providing $10,000 each to 16 communities fostering growth and success of small business. They introduced short-form requests for proposals and a guide to doing business with the government. They launched the LNG by BC program, which ensures businesses can take advantage of LNG opportunities. They've released the Starting a Restaurant in BC guide, and two more communities have just recently joined BizPal, Ashcroft and Taylor. BizPal provides a customized and simplified access to information on business permits, licenses, and other requirements for business. This makes a total of 117 municipalities in BC now available on BizPal. In the spotlight, BC's Northeast saw an increase of 3.9% in small businesses from 2008 to 2013, and the mainland and southwest saw an addition of 4,200 net new small businesses in that same five-year period. Small business confidence in BC continues to outpace the country. Looking ahead, the government looks to cut the business tax rate from 2.5% to 1.5%, increase government procurement spending with small businesses, simplify government processes and regulatory requirements, help businesses connect to and pre-qualify for opportunities in LNG, simplify and streamline the process of starting a restaurant in BC, and continue successful implementation of the BC Small Business Accord. So next up, we'll have George Hunter, who will give a short introduction on Small Business BC. George is the CEO of Small Business BC, and since joining in 2009, he has led the organizational transformation of Small Business BC to become a fully developed social enterprise. As a visionary executive, George has a proven track record of, as a pioneer and builder of effective private and not-for-profit organizations in both public and private sectors. Take it away, George. Thank you very much, Carly. And uh, thank all of you very much for attending today. We at Small Business British Columbia are very excited about the opportunity uh, to be here at this, at this webinar to talk a little bit about our, in particular, our products and services, which Bridget will go into in some depth in a couple of minutes. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to introduce the organization to you and to, uh, you know, describe a few uh, emerging uh, issues, opportunities with our client base, which is now right across the province, and perhaps spur some discussion in terms of how uh, individuals and some of you in the audience may be more interested in getting involved with us either as partners or participants in our programs and services. So I'm going to move to my first slide. There we go. I hope you can see that. Uh, as Carly mentioned, um, we've been around for quite a while. We were formed as a, as a not-for-profit organization. It was a joint venture, really, between the governments of British Columbia and Canada back in 2002. And the organization existed for a number of years as a public service office, providing information on government programs and services and helping uh, people get into small business. From about 2008 on, though, we've uh, emerged, as, a, as, a, as Carly mentioned, as a fully developed social enterprise. So we, in part, generate our own revenue, which helps us to deliver what is very much an ex a very expansive mandate. Um, uh, really, uh, we are intended to provide business solutions for every issue, every company, anywhere in British Columbia. So we are uh, essentially... Uh, 
an all-purpose organization that helps companies get into business, individuals get into business, and become successful. And for those of you that are in the economic development sector, you can see that this fits directly into your business retention modeling across the province. And that's one of the reasons that we're there for. We want to help strengthen businesses wherever they are. Now, it's a big mandate, and we rely heavily on partnerships. Another, that's another important point that I want to emphasize is we love to partner with individuals and organizations. Right now, we have uh, 86 of these public and private partnerships underway. We are completely aligned with the ministry's goals. As Carly stated, we're very impressed by the work that's being done by Minister Yamamoto and the team over at JTST, uh, and we support them whenever and however we can. In terms of our client base, um, right now, and from a survey that we recently, well, recently conducted, um, uh, we have an estimated 110,000 small businesses that self-identify as clients of ours. So our, actually, our, um, our usage rate is quite high. That's about 27% of the total of small businesses in the province. So it's very strong. Uh, and if we take that, uh, our, that client base and we map it against the, small biz, the total small business community, we get a very, very strong correlation. So in terms of size, in terms of industry sector and age, very, very strong correlation. However, it does break down in one spot. And I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this very clearly, but um, we are skewed with respect to uh, the geographical location of our clients. And because our, we have one main office and it's in Vancouver, we have about a 14% skew to Vancouver as, uh, in terms of our client base. And this really is it's not an issue for us. We see that we can still expand our delivery of services across the province, but it does show the, the importance of having physical presence in a location. Yeah, and I will just move to the next slide here. This is a slide I'm hoping again, hoping you'll be able to see this. It, 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 it really uh, just points out a couple of very interesting points. It looks like a complicated slide, but all this is is a ranked rating of uh, responses of the small business community to a very straightforward question. Can you name an organization that provides products and services that support small business? And you can see from the list that's in front of you, that across BC, we rank second only to the banks collectively in terms of the top of mind awareness uh, among small businesses. And this is a very, very powerful situation for us. Uh, and it's one, as you can see from the uh, little green arrow there, it, it's a significant difference and an improvement over uh, the last time the survey was done. Now, however, there is a bias in this, and it is that geographical bias. If you look at the regional data only, you'll find that the banks, the chambers and the CFs all rank higher than small business. And what's common about all of those organizations is that they have multiple physical locations in many communities across the province. So we are very interested in forming partnerships with, with groups of organizations, the chambers, the CFs, uh, the banks, in fact, and our, we have, um, you know, we're, we're making proposals as we speak to numbers of these organizations in terms of uh, partnering with them to help get our, um, I think, wonderful programming, small business programming out right across the province of British Columbia. And finally, I guess the, the, one of the points that I, maybe the, maybe the biggest point of all this, uh, particularly for those of you in economic development, is that this survey uncovered the fact that 46% of small business owners are unaware of any organization that provides support. Now, I find that really a shocking number, you know, that means that there are, there are thousands of companies out there some of them may be in good shape, some of them may not be in good shape, but none of them know where to go to help them to improve their circumstances, to help them get better at what they do, to help their survivability. So I think there's a compelling need um, for all of us to uh, get on board, work together to try and bring products and services to these companies and to make them aware that they exist so that they can uh, take advantage of them. Now, that's all I really wanted to say. It's really, a, um, uh, if you will, it's almost it's a plea <laughs> for a partnership. We really want to see uh, small business uh, BC products and services uh, uh, delivered right across the province of British Columbia so that all of those uh, companies across a wonderful province can take advantage of them. And now I guess I'll turn it over to Bridget, who can give you a much more in-depth uh, uh, discussion of and description of uh, the range of products and services that we offer. Again, thank you very much. Thanks very much, George. That was great. Next, we'll move over to Bridget Fields. 
Bridget graduated from the Sales and Marketing Executive Program at UBC and has a career spanning over 20 years in retail management, sales and marketing, product development, and business planning. Currently, she is working as the Client Services Manager at Small Business BC, leading a team of eight business advisors and analysts. In addition, she designs and facilitates business workshops for entrepreneurs and business managers. So take it away, Bridget. Thank you, Carly, and thank you for having us here today to talk about our products and services. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, I think George um, talked a lot about um, our reach and um, a little bit about what we have to offer, but I'm going to get into it a little bit more in depth. So um, who are we? Uh, small Business BC is the primary resource of small business knowledge-based products and services. Um, we're a nonprofit organization, as George mentioned, and our vision is really to be a champion for all those entrepreneurs around the province. Um, so our job really is to provide the relevant information, the appropriate pathfinding, any tools and resources that will help entre entrepreneurs to succeed and maintain sustainable businesses. So how do we do that? Uh, well, we do have a physical location uh, located here in the Lower Mainland in Vancouver, uh, 601 West Cordova, and that's our, that's our main office. Um, but we do serve clients throughout the province, and this is really important to get across to folks who are elsewhere outside of the Lower Mainland, is that all of the services, resources, education that we offer, advisory services, everything can be delivered via phone, we have a 1-800 number, via email, Skype appointments, we have webinars for all of our education as well. And that's happening on a regular basis, 9 to 5, um, and obviously through our website, clients can access information 24-7. So we do a lot of serving uh, regional British Columbia through our email ask us service, so I would encourage you, um, you know, to take advantage of that. So. Um, we, we field business questions from all over the province. Um, the wonderful thing about our website, too, is all of the products and services I'm about to talk about, clients can actually book those online. So they can actually book an appointment with an advisor, one of our, any of our services. They can also book to attend in person or via webinar, any of our education seminars as well. So accessibility is really easy uh, through multiple channels. Um, so we really encourage you to take advantage of all of those various channels. So I'm going to talk specifically next about all of the services and products offerings that we have uh, in a little bit of detail. Um, so this is an overview of everything that we offer kind of in a snapshot. We do everything from guided company registrations for clients. We have a great business plan advisory service uh, packages, um, market research services, international trade advisory services, um, ask the Expert Days, uh, we sell business kits, and then we have a great educational programming, as well as we host and promote events. Um, networking is a big component of being a successful entrepreneur, uh, so events is a big part of what we do here at Small Business BC as well. So first and foremost, um, kind of the number one thing a lot of uh, startup businesses come to us for is all what I call the nitty-gritty of getting a business started. And that includes things like, what should my company structure be? Um, how can I register a business? Um, how can I get help with my name approval? Um, what's the difference between a distinctive and descriptive element? So we provide a lot of checklists and how-tos, um, which really seems to appeal to a lot of entrepreneurs. They want to be told, okay, what's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? And so we cover such a broad range of information, um, and we guide the clients through all of these processes so that they're making the right decisions around naming their company, their company structure. We can help them with business number, registration, GST, PST, anything to do with city licensing and permits, so we work closely with the BizPal program, for sure. We get questions regarding hiring, firing, employment standards. Um, we work closely with WorkSafe BC as well. Uh, they are one of our partners that George mentioned. So we help clients uh, either through WorkSafe or through the Insurance Bureau of Canada to identify insurance that they would need for their business as well. We field a lot of questions about income tax. 
uh, payroll. Um, we give clients advice about what they need to do to open a business bank account and help them maneuver everything around both federal and provincial access regulations. So uh, on my team, I have some very experienced business advisors who can answer questions on any of these topics and also provide a kind of checklist and information um, to guide clients through um, all of this information that they need for their business startups. So around business planning, uh, this is one of our more popular services that we offer, um, primarily because a lot of our clients are seeking financing. And financing and business planning really go hand in hand, um, because to seek any program financing or through a traditional financial lender, a client needs to prepare and have a good solid business plan to take to the bank. So um, we offer services where we will actually sit down with the client and do a funding basic sort of assessment to determine what you know route of financing they should try to pursue. And we do that with, like I said, the traditional lenders, partners, Women's Enterprise Center, Futurepreneur, any government programs that are out there. So um, usually when a client is looking at doing a, doing a business plan, it isn't just, although it's a good idea to have one for yourself as a feasibility study of your business concept, it's primarily in connection with seeking financing. So what way can we help them be successful in doing that? So we have all kinds of business plan writing tools um, where we can point clients to sample business plans and all of those different kinds of things. But probably one of the best value add services that we provide is we do business plan coaching and reviews. That's a fee-based service that we offer here at Small Business BC. Um, we have a very experienced business plan coach on staff here. Um, who can help clients either have a third-party review as requested by their financial lender or um, just coaching them through the process of writing the business plan themselves. So um, that is really a cornerstone um, kind of service for us and um, very popular. Um, we also offer market research services here. So really the market research is the backbone of any business plan. So we have a number of market research services that we can provide. We have a full-time statistician, market research analyst on staff here at Small Business BC, Mark Eversfield, and he does one-on-one um, -on -one market research coaching with our clients, um, and he also conducts two levels of market research seminars here. So he does primary and secondary market research seminars, and those are also available via webinar. Um, but he can also provide and prepare customized market research reports. Um, for clients who are not wanting to do uh, market research on their own. And in fact, he's done you know, lots and lots of uh, market research for the province and different projects and things like that. So um, his services are definitely in demand. Um, one of his most popular products is our prospect list uh, for clients who are engaged in B2B activities where they're looking for a specific target market and they're looking for prospect lists. Um, so those are all fee-based services that we offer here at Small Business BC and um, are very helpful for our clients in being successful. We also have international trade advisory services here. So for any of our clients that are importing and exporting, um, this is a difficult do-it-yourself area. Um, well, we have lots of resources about importing and exporting on our website. We can point clients into a lot of areas uh, where we can up, and there is the provincial exporting guide uh, available to clients, it really is something that I believe requires a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and guidance, particularly for new importers and exporters. So um, anybody who is not export ready or import ready should definitely be taking our seminars or webinars. Uh, we have a Are You Thinking of Importing and Are You Thinking of Exporting seminar, which is a good broad base general knowledge. Uh, but then we also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as uh, company registration and import export registration packages. So we'll help clients identify their HS codes, any duties, restrictions, tariffs. Um, quite complex um, things for clients to be able to try and find on their own. So this is a service I can highly recommend for yourself or for your clients that you might be referring to us. So that's all of our internal expertise. Um, so in addition to those specialists, we also have general business advisors that clients can book. We offer a 30-minute complimentary one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, for clients who have business questions, and we do that by appointment, and that can be booked 
to our, to our uh, 1-800 number or um, here in Vancouver through our local number. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have all the in-house expertise. Um, so we partner with um, experts, uh, industry experts uh, and specialists. Um, and we run Ask the Expert Days, and these are super popular, uh, particularly in the accounting and legal areas, um, where we host a day and we bring in an accountant or a lawyer or a business broker or an HR specialist, uh, brand specialist. We do Ask the Expert Days as well as Ask the Social Media Expert Days, and we book clients for 30 to 45 minutes. to have one-on-one -on -one time with that expert. So this is an expansion, really, of our seminar webinar program in that um, a lot of our speakers are also our experts. So this is an opportunity for a client to have one-on-one -on -one time uh, and get some advice in those very specific areas. So um, we're broadening uh, our offerings here. We're adding Ask a Banker shortly. Um, and we're always looking for new uh, topics, um, you know, based on client demand, where they would like to have some expertise um, come in. We also have some tips that we've developed over the year, uh, over the years that are really useful for our clients as well. Uh, we have worked with Allura to uh, come up with an incorporation kit for British Columbia for those clients that are needing assistance with the incorporation process. We also have a startup HR kit for onboarding your first employees um, and a media communications kit uh, which uh, assists clients with uh, working with the media to publish. So as far as our education center goes, um, we have some fantastic quality education, um, both in the launching startup phase and also growing a business. So we currently have over 40 different seminars and webinars. Uh, our seminars are delivered by in experienced industry experts, as well as some internal staff as well, uh, like our Start Smart program and our market research program. Um, but primarily, what the sort of value add for your clients here is they're getting what we call a street smarts education um, with either small business owners or industry experts in that particular field. So we have packages and then we also have the ability for clients to cherry pick, fill in the gaps with very uh, specific topic areas. So uh, we have a focused business planning package, which is 22 hours of education. The value is incredible here. Um, you know, we're looking at, you know, three hours, $59, $69. So they're very affordable, uh, very competitively priced. The 22 hours of education is $369. That's, you know, eight different seminars. So um, there's incredible value here um, and really suits the needs of entrepreneurs. A lot of who come to us um, with a business background or some experience, uh, they just need to fill the gaps because maybe they don't know anything about social media or maybe they need to learn more about tax tips or, you know, those types of things. So um, we're really here to fill in the gaps, but also to provide, you know, full packages for people who want the full-on education opportunity as well. I'd like to talk a little bit about our events. Um, our big signature event are the Small Business BC Awards, um, which are launched in October, uh, Small Business Month, and they run through to February where we have our Grand Gala Awards Ceremony. And I, I, I want to highlight this as a fantastic opportunity for businesses in the community to get involved with Small Business BC, but also raise the profile of their businesses. So um, please watch the Small Business BC Awards come October. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, event to get involved with, and uh, it is open to businesses all across British Columbia. Um, we have nine different business categories that uh, businesses can enter in, everything from concept, you know, to importing, exporting businesses, um, so it's a fantastic opportunity. We also do an Inspire event, which is uh, experts in a panel, um, and we've just launched something called Local Leaders, uh, which is um, bringing in local leaders who are entrepreneurs uh, in an open house type of environment that we host here in Vancouver. Uh, we also are involved in multiple outreach events um, where we're trying to get the word out and about our services and you know, so we're out in the community as much as we possibly can. Um, and so also on our website, there is an events listing page and not only Small Business BC events are there, but events all around the province of British Columbia are there as well. So it's a great place, a one-stop sort of shop for finding out what events are available all across BC. 
So I'm just going to leave you with some contact information. Um, my direct contact information as well as our market research analyst, Mark Eversfield, our international trade advisor, Alison Bolton, and our business plan advisor, Josh Ludgate. So those are some key uh, people that you may want to contact. Um, and I'm happy to answer or field any questions that you might have. If you want to contact me directly, I would really welcome them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bridget. Next up, we have Natasha. And Natasha Strom is the co-founder of Nona Pia's Gourmet Sauces. Natasha resides in Whistler, BC with her husband, Norm, who is the creator of Nona Pia's Balsamic Reductions, along with their two children, Georgia and Oliver, who will also help out with their business. In 2010, Natasha decided to leave her career in physiotherapy to follow her passion, working full-time at Nona Pia's. Natasha primarily focused on growing sales while Norm worked on maintaining a premium quality product. In 2014, with some fantastic mentoring from their new partner, David Shilton, who they met after appearing on hit TV show Dragon's Den, Natasha managed to get Nona Pia's balsamic reductions onto the shelves of every major retailer in Canada. She also expanded distribution into food services and launched the product into the USA. Go ahead, Natasha. Thanks very much, Carly. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you uh, very much, Small Business BC, for asking me to speak today. I'm truly honoured. I'm Natasha Strim, the co-founder of Non-Appears Balsamic Reductions. So uh, just going to get my slide going here. Okay. So where did Non-Appears Balsamic I've been asked today just to talk a little bit about, how, about our company firstly, and then secondly, how Small Business BC has um, been part of our company. But firstly, balsamic reductions, my husband started making them 15 years ago and he's perfected the recipe ever since. And it was about four years ago that we decided that we'd like to start selling them in some farmers markets and Christmas shows. And uh, we wanted to save some money for a family vacation each year. We did really, really well and we definitely had a lot of money for a family vacation, but we were exhausted. There was a lot of work going to farmers markets and Christmas shows. So we had a bright idea and we thought, why not put our product into the retail market when we don't have to do as much work? Surely if it's on the, on the shelf in the store, we can just sit back and watch it sell. Well, little did we know that we got into store by store and then into some of the bigger chains that to make our product sell, then we had to go into the store and do in-store in -store demonstrations. So it wasn't actually less work, it became more work. We increased our distribution right across BC, and during this growth curve, we definitely had some challenges. The primary one being exhaustion. We began making our balsamic reductions in our home kitchen in Whistler, and once we started getting into the stores, we started borrowing commercial kitchens at night time while we worked our full-time jobs during the day. I was a physiotherapist, and Norm was the um, general manager with Intraware. One night, we ended up, the four of us in the emergency with Norm having chest pains and realized that we couldn't keep going like this and we had to make the decision whether to stay with what we were doing or follow our passion. We both jumped ship and before we knew it, we were both selling this balsamic reduction full time. We had no business background at all. We struggled with numbers, so we ended up hiring a specialist to help us understand growth margin points, what we should sell our product for, who we should sell it to, do we need distributors? What will they offer us? So we spent three hours a week with this lady learning all of that. And then now uh, we also had cash flow struggles. We had a max visa card. Every day I was moving money from one, one account to the other and back again, telling people that, you know, their money would come next week, the week after. We, we struggled through this early period and, uh, and learned a lot and managed to establish really good sales in BC. This is when we thought, hey, let's grow nationally before someone copies off us and does it for us. We knew to grow nationally, we would need some more cash. So we, uh, that's when we decided to, uh, to go to Dragon's Den and see how we fared. We were really fortunate. Uh, we ended up doing a deal with the wealthy barber, David Chilton, and the very next day he rang us. At this time, Norm was, uh, he kind of branched off into doing the production and quality, quality control of our product, and I was doing sales, trying to increase distribution and, uh, and increase our sales. I remember David saying to me, well, Natasha, you're only in BC. Why aren't you in the rest of Canada? And where's your US business plan? You're not working hard enough. Well, after I finished crying, I thought, that's it. I'm going to work harder. 
So he uh, he said, you need to go to the big change. You need to be in Loblaws and in Sobeys and you need to ring them up. You need to sell to them direct. Try not to have a distributor involved. You'll have more money that you can grow your product with in-store demos. Anyway, after a lot of coaching, I ended up ringing these stores, and before we knew it, we were selling direct to pretty much every retail chain across Canada. Before our segment on Dragon's Den had even aired, we'd worked so hard with David that our stores had grown from 356 stores to 1,600 stores in seven months. Thank goodness, uh, early on when we started working with David, the money that he invested in us, I think we spent the next week, and he said, you know, with this steep growth curve, you're going to need more cash flow. And, uh, and I had, I had no idea how much money we would need. I went to the bank and, and I asked him for a certain amount. David said, oh no, you'll need lots more than that. Had we not got this early insight from David, we would have got to a steep part of our growth curve, not had enough cash flow to support our growth, and I think that's where a lot of small businesses struggle, not realising what they'll need down the road. He also told us to hire a part-time CFO. I had no idea actually what a CFO was and uh, didn't really understand the need for one, but we did end up hiring one just last month. And it was amazing just to uh, be able to understand how much balsamic we sold, were we making money, if we spent money on promos, what our return was, what we were projecting, what cash flow we were projecting to need next next month in six months, and also our borrowing demand in capacity with the banks was changing, and it still is week to week just because we're growing so quickly. So, having uh, having someone to uh, to work with the bank, and, and I know um, Bridget was mentioning mention, mentioning that before. Had I known that we could have got this information earlier on from Small Business BC, I totally would have jumped in. But um, anyway, so that was all great insight for us, and uh, thank goodness. The steep growth curve we went through and are going through right now is extremely scary. A few weeks ago, David, David Children rang me up, and he said, what's wrong? And I said, why? He said, we haven't rang for two days. He's really hands-on. He said, uh, I told him that I was so nervous, all of this money going out, more than it seemed like was coming in, and he said it was completely normal. Well, this year was an anomaly for us, and there could be more money going out than coming in, and it was uh, it was totally fine and just to relax. But he also did say that, you know, we were very fortunate to have a great product and be able to grow it, and we should be uh, we should be having fun with this. He said, if you can't look back in a few years at what you've done right now and say, wow, that was a lot of fun, things aren't balanced well. So you need to uh, you need to find that balance. Well, we pretty much found the balance when we were told that the steep growth curve and the feelings we were having were completely normal. I think uh, to other small business owners, um, a lot of things that have helped us along the way is uh, Norm and I are very communicative and we love to ask questions. We ask questions from other companies, companies that are a step ahead of us. We're constantly asking our consumers, you know, we're breaking into the, launching into the States right now. If we meet someone from the States that love our product, we say, why do you like it? How much would you pay for it? Where would you want to buy it? So always talking to people. Working hard, obviously, is a big part of being an entrepreneur and making compromises. We, uh, we started this business so that we could take a big family vacation each year, and funnily enough, now we don't have the time to take it. But anyways, uh, last year when we started working with David, we said, oh, well, next year we're going to go to Europe. And uh, he said, how long for? And I said, well, I'm not going to tell him four weeks. I said, well, three weeks. And he started screaming at me saying, you can't go away for three weeks. The next two years is so important. You can maybe go away for a weekend, go to Vancouver and visit Stanley Park. And anyway, we started laughing and thinking he's crazy. If you asked us today whether we could go away for three weeks, we'd probably laugh. There's, there's absolutely no way. But uh, having said that, this summer is going to be the first summer in five years that we're not doing five or six farmers markets every weekend. So we're really excited to uh, to go on camping trips, which we've watched other families do for the last five years. So uh, compromises is a big one. Um, I think my husband hit the nail on the head a few weeks ago when someone came up to him and I and said, you guys are so lucky you've, you've thought of this business and balsamic vinegar reduction and everyone wants to buy it. And my husband looked at me and said, yeah, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And uh, I think that's really pertinent for every every entrepreneur. Um, now, finally, I'd really like to talk about Small Business BC. And uh, it's amazing, just with listening to Bridget and George, I've actually learned a lot more about Small Business BC just um, being part of this webinar. When we uh, we won Best Company Award just recently, straight away the next day we were given access to all of the webinars and seminars that Small Business BC had to offer. And uh, 
we ended up booking in for a webinar on branding. We were just in the process of rebranding our, our product. And um, we did this webinar on branding, and the man that gave the webinar, David Child, uh, also offered an hour of one-on-one -on -one time of his time. So the next day, we were meeting in Vancouver with him. He gave us lots of great advice, and he even went a step further and met with our branding company and worked with them a little bit on our rebranding uh, issues and things that we were building. So um, the support was amazing. Uh, we, did, we then did a financial analysis webinar, and um, I actually learned what a what a profit loss statement was, what a balance sheet was. It was uh, it was really helpful, and I'm actually still working with that information, which is accessible ongoing, um, which is great. And then uh, special social media, we've never really done much with social media. So the girl working with, with for me and with me, uh, we both did a social media seminar, and we're also getting ongoing support with that. So. Um, just, just in regards to social media, as soon as we won this award as well, we uh, we always try to tweet and Facebook, and we're just kind of learning all about it. But the support we got from Small Business BC with people sending recipes and retweeting what we we tweeted and and sending out Facebook messages was just huge. We couldn't we couldn't believe the support. The uh, the website as well um, is extremely informative. Any questions that I've ever needed answered since being part of Small Business BC since we won this award, there's not anything that from being a grassroots company to where we are now to even moving ahead, I can't see any any way that you can have a question that isn't answered. And then just after listening to, to Bridget and the support that you can get through different avenues with Skype, phone calls, um, you know, everything and, uh, and all of the support that we didn't know about. And it just goes back to what George said with 46% of companies unaware of the support you can get as a small business. We were one of them. And right up until a couple of months ago, I had no idea that small business was available. And it's, it's fantastic to have that support because as a small company, you can't keep hiring people. Having a part-time CFO was a huge jump for us. If we'd known beforehand that we could have got this information along the way, it would have saved us so much time. We would have made less mistakes. So um, I encourage anyone who's a small business to firstly engage and, and use their resources, but also share it with other small businesses because uh, we tend to all hang out together and cross paths in some way, shape, or form as small business owners. So um, spread the word because uh, I, I certainly will. Um, yeah, so that's all I've got to say, and thanks again, Small Business BC, for um, for the award and for having me today, because it's definitely increased our networking tenfold. Thank you very much, Bridget. Um, that concludes our, our, sorry, Natasha. Thank you very much, Natasha. That that's great. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that concludes our presentation portion of the webinar today. Um, Next, we're going to move on to the question and answer period. So if anyone attending has any questions to ask any, any of our speakers today, they can just click on the Q&A button at the top, on the top of the screen there. And we'll get started. Just to kick us off, I have a question for Small Business BC. What is the most common problem brought to you, brought to your attention by new entrepreneurs and or small business owners, and what do you usually advise them to do? Um, the most common problem uh, is usually uh, accessing financing uh, or even knowing about what financing is available. Um, and so, that's a very common question is where can I get money to start or grow my business and um, I mean we covered that a little bit in the presentation so we normally sit down with the client try to find out what their financing needs are like how much money they're looking to borrow and what the use of funds are so that we're not a we're not a lending organization ourselves and so we have to do the pathfinding for the client to help them be aligned with the right program or the right financial institution so um, I would say that's probably one of the to overcome. I might just add to that that uh, that we have a breadth of information on uh, on virtually every financing source that's available to small businesses. So 
it doesn't matter whether you're coming with a tech company that has questions about uh, you know financing commercialization and may be able to make use of IRAP and the uh, federal uh, programs that support innovation or whether they're looking for traditional bank finance, financing or even individual financing. So uh, this pathfinding um, process that we take and Bridget and her team take the uh, client through is very, very important because it helps them focus on really what the highest uh, opportunity of success uh, uh, sources are for them. Great, thanks. Neil O'Farrell asks, can entrepreneurs access the one-on-one -on -one sessions remotely? Absolutely. Um, uh, we can do it via webinar or through a 1-800 number. So, um, or over the phone, whatever the client is most comfortable with. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, we just book dedicated time with you. So, you know, we're fielding calls all the time from all over the province. Aided advisory, any of, any of the offerings that we have are available remotely. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Katie asks, what can communities do to support a small business friendly environment? By local. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there are, there's, there, there are a host of things that, uh, that individuals can do. I mean, first of all is to support the local organizations that that are in turn providing support to small businesses. So it, depending on the community, it might be a, a CF office or a chamber. It might be individuals uh, in bigger communities that have incubation centers. To be engaged in, in helping build the infrastructure that in turn supports small business. And, and, uh, and just and I, I think it's really important is spreading the word about, the number one, the value of small business and uh, the importance to local communities of having a vibrant uh, small business community. Great, thanks George and Bridget. Uh, Patrick Tolshard has a question for you again as well. Uh, do you work with a lot of tourism specific startups, specifically adventure tourism in rural communities with a high tourism visitation? We absolutely have. Um, Deplining companies in Tofino, whale watching companies, yes, yeah, a lot of tourism companies, uh, lower mainland and province wide. Great, thanks. And this is a question for Natasha. What resource of small business species was most useful for your business, Natasha? Um, hmm. I would have to say the financial analysis one for me personally. Uh, we have no business background, as I said, and we've kind of learned as we went. And um, we've kind of just got to the point where we've had this, this steep growth curve that it was kind of pertinent that we understood um, figures and balance sheets and stuff and uh, knowing where our money was coming from, were we making any money, and how it all makes sense on a statement. So for, for me, that one was really was really valuable. And um, I think moving forward, trying to grow our company, especially growing into the United States, we're not everywhere like we were in Canada when we grew our company. We were at so many shows, we were in people's faces, we've been on Dragon Den. So kind of our company's recognized and that's helped support sales. Going down into the States is a huge kettle of fish and it's such a different ball game and no one knows it's down there, let, let alone knows our products. So having the um, the access to social media and um, even more even more so I didn't know about from what Bridget said and learning how to uh, grow the company through social media support, I think it's going to be a big plus for us going into the States because we just need any kind of extra avenues to, uh, to promote our product. So um, I guess it changes all the time. But yeah, financial analysis now and moving forward, we're really hoping to get a lot out of the social media and the branding help is still helping us as well. Can I just add a point to that? Sure. Yeah. I really want to support what Natasha said. The, uh, if you will, the biggest source of pilot error leading to a crash in a business is not understanding the cash flow uh, that, they're, that their company is going through. And, and typically in growth periods, companies have to pay co very close attention to that because uh, you, their, the cash needs quickly outstrip their, the, the current sources of revenue. The other important point that she brought up is if you can't communicate your financial circumstances to lenders, 
you won't get loans, or investors, you won't get loans. So understanding the, the, the financial aspects of your company are extremely important for, as you, as you move up the, the, the food chain to, to bigger and bigger opportunities, you need to have, have better and better understandings of exactly how your business works from a, from a financing perspective. Thanks, George. We just have a question from Mark Drisdale. He's wondering, do you have any unique partnerships with local chambers or community futures? And if so, what does that partnership look like? We've had, we, have, we have had partnerships with both the chambers uh, and community futures on individual programs. At one time, we partnered on video conferencing programs to move our materials. Uh, to move our uh, seminars out into communities, and, and we have partnered on uh, microloan programs uh, for um, uh, you know very early stage small micro companies, basically with the chambers. We would like to expand, and we're very open to the structure of that expansion. But we see the value in both those organizations, both those types of organizations, and their ability to, to have relevance to their local communities. I mean, you know, people know your local CF office, or you know your local chamber. There's a higher level of trust, there's a higher level of familiarity, and, and they're close. So we would uh, love to engage either organizations collectively or independently um, in order to, uh, uh, you know, more effectively align what we're doing with what they're trying to do for their, for their clients. So, again, we're extremely open. Uh, we don't have any, uh, any specific design. We're actually open to discussing opportunities with individual um, organizations or their collective organizations. Great. Okay. What would you consider to be one of the most important steps for an entrepreneur to take when starting a small business? When, when starting a business? Sorry, when starting a small business. Um, I think what we really encourage our clients to do um, is they tend to want to jump in with both feet and think the most important thing is getting a company registered, named and registered. And we really encourage our clients to take a few steps back and start evaluating their business life, uh, which usually leads to a launching pad for market research. So. Um, we, we often find uh, entrepreneurs at the stage of wanting to access financing and they haven't really done a thorough uh, market research um, examination of their business idea or concept, so haven't thoroughly examined the target audience, uh, don't know who their competitors are, um, haven't really thought about a pricing strategy or, or done any kind of surveys or focus groups. Um, don't know enough about the industry to speak to what's going on in the industry. So um, I think that's, you know, one of the biggest errors we um, see going in at the startup phase, but it's definitely something that can be corrected because um, there's lots and lots of information and resources available um, for any aspect of the market research part. So um, we do try to get our clients down that path of embarking on doing that feasibility study for their business concept. Yeah, we like to say that uh, small companies, when they come in, they tend to be long on passion and short on planning and perspective. Exactly what Bridget was describing. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, we'll just wait another few seconds here for any incoming questions. But it looks like the questions are wrapping up. Okay, well, I think that's it for our webinar today. I'd just like to give a big thank you for all three presenters uh, for presenting today and all of our participants for joining. I think it was a really great and informative webinar, and um, it was great. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thanks a lot.